permanent chimney that was there and having to work a design around that chimney that both functioned, looked nice, and you know, just was pleasant to look at. Uh, so what I decided to do is after a little research, I designed essentially a small U-shaped kitchen in this space um, using that edge of the chimney as one side of the U. Um, and I then pushed my range forward slightly to create a 60 inch gap in that workspace, which is the minimum for uh, U-shaped kitchens. So my goal was to give enough space to walk on the other side of the island, but also plenty of functioning space for both of them to cook and feel comfortable in that space. Um, I do not have a model piece or a product piece for it, but my sink is a 30 inch fire clay uh, white farm sink, uh, deep, wide, plenty to do whatever you want to do with it. Um, to the side of it, I chose um, a large double panel um, dishwasher made by Fisher and Peckel. Um, I wanted to have a dishwasher that could easily function one for pots and pans, one for dishes. Um, because they like to cook so much, I wanted to have the ability for them to have one on their you know, toughest setting um, without damaging their more fine uh, um, plates and other things, cups and glasses. Uh, for the sink, I chose, um, it's a Nantucket gooseneck faucet. And I wanted to keep it kind of simple, so uh, the pull-down is actually built into the faucet. And so it just functions on one handle, and then it has the pull-down from the end. Um, very sleek brushed nickel, um, and I think it complements the sink quite well. And uh, I decided for lighting to have a large, wide uh, window right above that uh, to really bring some light in from that side since uh, we were taking away two windows from that wall that already existed in the space. Um, then uh, across the way, uh, I went with a, a DCS 48 inch dual fuel range. Um, like I said, it runs four convection burners on one side, four gas on the other, two ovens underneath um, that are both gas, uh, as well as some storage. So uh, the whole hope with that was that uh, Mr. Jones could cook with any type of fuel that he liked, uh, especially because he specified that he wanted to try to incorporate that. Um, to the side of it, um, I know myself, when I cook a lot, I like to cook with spices. But I don't necessarily want to go digging across my kitchen for my spices. And so I incorporated a fold-down spice rack into the granite countertop. Um, it's just spring-loaded underneath. Um, it'll hold anywhere between 24 and 36 different spices, depending on size. Um, and so the hope there was that it was very easy to get to, right next to the oven where you're primarily using it. Um, but then could easily just be popped down when you didn't need it or you needed a little extra space next to your oven to put something, um, anything like that. And the top of it is actually granite as well, so when it comes down, all you see is a small stainless steel rim around it where it sits, and other than that, it blends right down. Um, so the spice rack, I see it's at an angle. What's under the counter for um, shelving under that? Under this, yeah. um, you have two pull drawers that are a little bit more shallow to uh, okay. For to accompany. Good question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I had to think about that a lot when I did it. Um, but yeah, these two first drawers are a little bit more shallow. I pictured them for silverware. Um, and then there's a drawer uh, right underneath that is full depth, um, the full uh, 24 inch depth. What made you rotate it at an angle instead of making it flat so your drawers could be deeper? Um, as you can see right here, uh, when I pushed this island out, it created uh, quite a deep area, especially when I had the bar. Um, and so to kind of pull that back in so that I didn't end up having, you know, a four foot deep counter, five foot deep counter, uh, when I got over to this area, I had to bring it back in a little bit. And so uh, that bar top I, had, I brought around as well, and it created kind of that um, angle. diagonal yeah. angle uh, right here uh, that you see. So it does sit flush to the counter. The it bar, does. Right. It sits flush to the bar. Um, but at an angle to the face yeah. of the cabinets. Uh, how did you decide to show the, um, you mentioned so like, how did you decide to store wine? You mentioned spices and decorative dishes. So, yep. Um, next on the list, <laughs> uh, Avalon uh, Dual Zone Wine Cooler is uh, what I chose. And uh, I specifically chose for it to be left hinged um, because it's actually located right up here next to the fridge. 
Okay. Um, when that's about I the counter? Or that's about the counter? It's above the, the counter. counter. It actually sits on top of the counter, and that's why it's left opening, because obviously right opening, I'd have to be reaching across the counter and opening towards me. That uh, very inconvenient. So, um, but I, I had a dead space there. I knew they loved their wine. They wanted it chilled. Um, and so I decided what better way to incorporate the wine cooler than right on your countertop. It's visual, it's decorative, um, and it's functional. How tall is the top shelf of the wine cabinet? Like, what, is there any challenge? Um, well, this is 36. Okay. Um, so you're looking at, I, I think this is, I want to say it was like 32 inches to the top, so just under 32 inches to that top shelf. Okay. Um, so just under six feet. Um, which I don't think is totally unreasonable for the top shelf of your wine chiller. And how many can that hold? Bottles? Uh, 24 bottles. 24. Which I think is adequate. Do you think that's enough? <laughs> You're aware. For me, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> enough for me. Because I drink what I drink. I drink red wine too, and that doesn't always have to be chilled. That's so. actually a good idea. Do you have a spot for the red and white wine for separate? Because I, I do wine. not. Put a um, spot right above it, just a cubby hole. It very well could be. Uh, I decided to, um, what would be placed there as a decorative piece, um, since it is dead space. Um, but it's so tall also that you're talking in the seven to nine foot range at that time, point. Storing your wine up there is really inconvenient. You could, but I didn't feel like it. you could ask your husband to get it. Yeah. I just didn't feel it was functional. <laughs> Some of us have short husbands. So. I, I, I'm in five, six, I could reach it, so... Yeah. Um, how, how far out does your countertop sit? So, like, the width of your countertop. How, how far from the floor? No, how far? How wide? How wide? 24 inches. 24? Yeah. It's, it's actually more like 25 because there is a slight lip the there. The cabinets the are 24? Yes. And the countertop's 25. Yeah. So. Um, you're, it looks like, you, did you say what, what brand and whether or not your refrigerator is a cabinet depth? Um, it is cabinet depth. It's okay. 24 inches deep. Um, it is the Sub Zero 36 inch fridge. Okay. Um, I know that the Joneses really uh, would have liked a slightly larger fridge, um, but due to the design constraints and that chimney there, I wanted to have plenty of clearance for the doors to open. Okay. Um, so I had to shrink the fridge down slightly. So how much room is there for the the uh, fridge to open? Because I see there's really a um, it's fairly tight um, things coming out both you know the legs of the U come out both sides of it. Um, so. Is that going to function well to get your trays and everything pulled out? Yep, um, there, there is enough space there that those doors will fully open. Okay. Um, sadly, you probably won't get farther than, I guess, about 100 degrees um, when you open those doors, okay. so just over 90. Um, but it will be plenty to function in the fridge. Okay. And the added depth here um, created by that chimney mm -hmm. um, will make it so that you're not opening your fridge into your cooking area. Okay. Um, it's kind of a dedicated pocket there. Okay. <clears throat> um, any other questions? Or yeah, you use the molded trim? Molded uh, for my trim, I just used a basic trim um, around the base of the room. Um, stained wood, uh, very similar to uh, the flooring. Um, the flooring, I used a fossilized uh, bamboo java, um, about a half inch, uh, which this model right here, this is uh, a very similar uh, color to what I was choosing. Um, you can see it a little bit in this picture, but to uh, tie in uh, a more rustic feel, uh, I chose to create uh, fake wood rafters through my kitchen so that when you walked in, um, wood on the ceiling, wood on the floor, um, gave a very rustic feel, uh, bright white cabinets, more modern with your dark granite countertops. By fake, do you mean there's not structural or it's it is not structural. plastic? It's decorative. Or, is it, or do they drop down from the original no, ceiling? Like yes. Ones. So how it comes down about four inches from the original <laughs> ceiling. So you still you're not exposing the actual joists in the ceiling. Okay. Um, but it, it is uh, not structural. Completely decorative. Okay. Are they? So in between yes, the joists is are in between the fake joists are the beams are is the ceiling white. In between them, or is it all wood uh, in between? Nope, it is. Uh, it is just a slight off shade of my walls, which okay. um, the name sounds uh, amusing, but it's a uh, ponytail, is what it's called. So uh, made by Olympic. So uh, and I felt that was a very warm uh, color. Okay. So and then um, I guess to continue past that, uh, I decided for the accent piece, which was the tiling, the backsplash, 
Um, I went with this, which is a um, fair amount beach mosaic tile um, that I felt had browns hues that tied in with my granite, um, but also was just the right shade off from my walls that it didn't clash. Um, and it also the wood complemented. I wanted a warm, uh, kind of cozy feel that is very uh, tied to that Tuscan Italian, um, but also having those contrasts of whites and blacks that felt more modern as well. How did you choose to address the, um, the parties and like the gatherings? I see a small table. Uh, yep. How big is the table and how many does it seat? Um, the table only seats three. Okay. Um, so my uh, my big challenge with the seating in general was uh, that this kitchen is relatively small. Um, and it is right adjacent to the living room. So what I felt was the best way to handle this was my bar can handle two to three people. And then my uh, seating can handle also three, maybe four if you pull that table out. Um, so generally you can seat about seven people. And then you have the living room off to the side that can also host people as well. So. Um, the seating was quite a challenge, but I felt giving the Joneses a small formal dining area, which they would have liked just for themselves and maybe a grandchild later on or a guest, um, but not creating a massive table that takes up the entire space um, that would only be used when they're hosting massive events and then otherwise would be a decorative piece in this room uh, that really took up a lot of critical space that could be used for other things. Can you... Um can you address uh, your lighting plan? Yep. Um, for lighting, um, I chose a, it's a Allen & Roth mini pendant LED light, uh, which you can see hanging here uh, and here. And this is actually the, the real life picture of it. Um, I chose to hang three of those uh, in the representation. Um, that might vary a little bit with the actual length of the bar. Um, but the idea was that I wanted some direct lighting down on the bar where I imagined most of the eating would happen. Um, and then throughout the room I decided to use an inset um, brushed nickel LED light that would be hidden um, between those fake rafters. So um, it would create plenty of lighting in the room, but you actually wouldn't be, you wouldn't walk into the room and see a glaring light like you kind of see in here. Um, they were kind of hidden and pocketed. Do you think that the joys, though, the ones that are coming down, will kind of take away the amount of light that's coming down? Uh, I think there'll be ad adequate lighting, and due to it being LED, um, it's really not going to be very power hungry. Um, so having a few extra LEDs to get that extra lighting in the room, I don't think will be an issue. Now, how many do you have of the recessed lighting in there? Um, the recessed lighting, I was thinking about about eight of them, um, four along this side, four along this side. And then you would have your, your recess lighting in the center as kind of an accent lighting. Um, I also chose to use an undermount uh, LED lighting underneath my counter over on this side and underneath my microwave, which is right over here, uh, for some task lighting. Um, because I know personally, it, those LEDs, the way they're going to be set up, you're not going to have adequate lighting on your counters if you're working on that counter um, because it's going to be behind you. So I wanted to make sure I had great task lighting um, and they're actually set up on a sensor um, or a switch, depending on how you'd like it. So you can uh, you can just have them there freely whenever you use them and they turn right on. Um, or if you find that a little too frequent, uh, you can also just have them on a manual switch. Okay. Um, did you already address your range hood? Uh, no, I no. did not address my range hood. Um, I'd, I'm planning to have a custom range hood made. Um, the range hood is going to sit uh, about two feet to three feet above the fridge, uh, above the range, I mean. Um, it's just, I'm going to try to hide it up away from the range because it's centrally located in the room. Um, my concern was that it was going to become this focal point within the room that I really did not want it to be. Uh, so the idea is to try to push it up away from the range. Um, and hide some of that um, duct that comes up from it into those fake rafters. Um, I checked the joist plan, and um, it's actually going to go up into the ceiling and through the joist out to the end of the building. Uh, so a lot of that vent work will be hidden. Uh, it won't be obnoxious. You won't have to see it. Uh, anything like that. So, And uh, as far as the microwave that's being used, um, very basic um, wall-mounted microwave unit. Um, <coughs> You know, nice stainless steel finish, black trim, 
um, but nothing 